Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Urban, um, Mr. OMB, and today we're going to be looking at mixing inside of FL Studio. Uh, this is going to be a Drake style mix. Uh, the track was influenced by the song Starting from the Bottom, Now We're Here, and we're going to start off with the EQ on the piano. All right, let's get into it. So right now what I'm doing is optimizing my browser. Um, this is going to be in a future uh, tutorial on how to get your compressors and EQs within your browser. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the parametric EQ. Okay, now just looking at this, um, the first thing I want to do is focus the piano, cancel out some of the lower frequencies. Let's go ahead and do a sweep where uh, it seems like the frequencies are really all bunched together and we're going to try to clear that out yeah so I run the I run the maybe around the 600 hertz run the six, just trying to yeah there we go See if I want to give it a little topping shimmer. <laughs> shimmer. Now with the leveling, I usually want to have my main sound around uh 20, about 20 dB, 16 dB. Now, one thing that I definitely like doing is I like cutting between 1000 and 1500 hertz because that's usually where the main vocal will lie. You can hear that really does clear up that piano. So we're just hearing it with over the bass. Okay, so far I do like the way the piano sounds. Find a little compression to it. I just want to really control the peaks of the piano. Um, still let it have a little dynamic range. Just leveling it out a little bit. Try about 3.5. So this is a little a theories. Uh, we're going to let um, more of the transients in. Okay, so usually with your compression, you want to go after about three to four um, gang reduction, and then you just make that up on the output. I do like the way this sounds so far. So now we're going to go ahead and check out the EQ on the compression and bass. Now on the piano, I also did put the compression before the EQ. And we're going to do that, the same thing on this channel. It's just you didn't see me do that. I uh, try to cut it down for the, for the timing of the video. So we're already looking at the, the GR meter, which is gain reduction meter. We already got 3 dB worth of gain reduction. Now for more advanced tutorials, usually you want to get the compressions release time to match with the beat. And um, 
we'll talk about that in another video. This is mainly just for getting the mix to sound good um, for beat making purposes. We're going to cancel out some of the lower end frequencies just to focus the bass a little bit more. Because uh, this track does have about three bases layered together. Okay, just hearing the problem frequencies, you can hear that a lot within this. Uh, around like 300 hertz I think will sound good. Go. Give it a little bass boost. Probably around the, the 180 hertz. Just to fill out that frequency a little bit more. Once again, I, I do want to make my cut between 1,000 and 15 hertz. Take off that. Yeah, um, leave a lot more space. We, we really don't want that our bass to sound all the way up there. Now, it still does have harmonic distortion, so you'll still be able to hear that on your on your laptop. So now this is a uh, one of the other bass layers. Trying to figure if I want a stereo. Let's go ahead and put some EQ on that. Right about now, I'm kind of realizing that um, that first bass was going to be my main bass, so I want to put a little bit more bass on that main bass sound. So I'm going to cut it off for about 40 hertz, which is a EDM um, type suggestion. So I'm just clearing out the frequencies and giving it a focal point. Another rule of thumb as far as putting your EQ before or after your compression, um, I've seen a couple of people that like to cut before their compressor and um, add a e uh, boost frequencies after the compressor. I'm just making another cut right there. Between that one, 1,500 hertz. Um, let's go ahead and get some levels. Now, one thing to notice is that the piano is still visible, and you can still hear both of those bases on top of each other pretty well. So I know with this EQ, I'm gonna really take off that that bottom it's just a low shelf clearing out those frequencies again There's also some more events stuff that you can do with the reverbs, but um, as I stated before, this this is really for um, just getting your tracks compatible or um, being able to compete on with other comp uh, producers. A stereo fill sounds pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and pause it. 
Um, I do want to emphasize that everything right now is very audible. You can hear everything um, stacked on each other, but it's not competing with each other. Um, so let's go ahead and focus in on the uh, top end synth and some more EQing. So we're going to start off with the compressor. This compressor is actually is known for uh, using it with more dynamic instruments, um, drums. But I, 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 I love the way this sounds on this synth. Sound compressor. As you can hear, it's really taming those high peak sounds. First thing I hear is definitely that top. It's bothering my ears. Now we're on the. Now that's also one thing. The more narrow you you put the band, the more deeper you can go. Is, um, surgical EQing. There we go. Really taming those those high end frequencies and just cancel out the low ends. Just let it breathe a little bit. Just really trying to get that Once again, I'm looking at the 1900 I boosted around the two the two uh, thousand hertz just to um, have it shine a little bit more in the mix. Before and after, pretty dramatic difference. Add some reverb to it. Gives it a lot more depth. The more reverb you add, the more the sound will start sitting in the back of the mix. 